So I'm here with Brian Gephardt of UTC Aerospace and we're discussing laser warning receivers. So Mr Gephardt, could you tell me a little bit about the history of laser warning receivers? Yeah, laser warning has been a requirement specifically within the US Army uh, since about 1994 on the ground side. Uh, aviation's kind of embraced the technology uh, along as a part of a key piece of the aviation uh, protection suites. Um, we've been doing this type of application for about 35 years out of our Danbury, Connecticut facility. All right, thank you. So how does it transfer from the avi avionics uh, and air-based assets uh, platform to a land-based platform? How do you sort of adapt it? Well, you know, one of the things is the key pieces of threats are relatively the same, whether it's an air asset or a ground asset. You know, primarily, laser warning is looking at three key items. So, laser range finders, target designators, and then a very lethal type of threat, the beam rider missiles. Uh, aviation has incorporated that uh, in our system, and I can show you that. This is the ANAVR-2B, uh, it's the U.S. Army uh, selection as part of their aircraft survivability equipment suite. Uh, this capability has been around, we did the 2A prior to this. This system has been on the wing for the past uh, about 10 years, and uh, we've developed and uh, delivered over 2,000 systems uh, around the world. Uh, this type of technology and stuff, uh, you know, it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, we've taken this type of technology, transferred that to the ground platforms, and originally, the biggest Thing is the environmentals you know if I can if I can survive on an aircraft a little bit different on the ground so it's more of a repackaging type of application so have you have you engaged much with the US Army in terms of getting equipment uh, such as that adapted onto ground vehicles uh, we have uh, the US Army is now making uh, strides and trying to adapt this type of technology and others as part of an overarching vehicle protection suite uh, on the aviation side there is a US Army program management office aircraft survivability that handles that sort of thing the ground is now moving toward that recognizing that the potential of fights with what we'll call near peers and the capabilities that they have is that these are important capabilities we need to provide for our ground forces in order to survive and then be able to fight back on today's battlefield. So do you see your products being integrated into the uh, modular active protection system program? Yeah, currently we're working, this is the ANVVR4, which is a common system, again, using the same type of capabilities as our ground has, has used uh, throughout combat. Uh, this type of system is designed uh, from the environmental aspect. We're also part of the, uh, the COI that's looking at maps uh, to also integrate that type of capability into the system so that we'd be more of a plug and play type of capability or it can be a standalone. So this can be incorporated as an applique application providing situational awareness to the crew or it can be entitled into the overall fire control system. And now you really make that leap from a survivability asset to a lethality asset. So do you have any future development plans for this or any other products in the land domain? Yeah, so this is our primary focus right now from the U.S. Army ground combat capability. Uh, this system is now, uh, we're demonstrating this uh, in the middle of February at Fort Benning as a part of the uh, Army Expeditionary Warfighting Experiment. Uh, we're currently integrated on uh, two M1 Abrams and two M2 uh, A3 Bradleys. And what the command will be able to do is assess what happens from a situational awareness aspect when you don't have this equipment, which is our current situation as a, as a ground force, and when you do. So what the crew will be able to see is the ability of being able to identify the fact that they're being engaged with a laser-aided type of weapon system, being able to identify that quickly, being able to take and slew the turret to be able to identify that as a threat and be able to engage that threat. And again, this has even been done as far back as 1997. Uh, the capability is recognized as this is a key piece of equipment. And again, just given the economics of what we live in and stuff like that, it, it's really sometimes become a bill pair. But now, given the type of threats we're looking at, it really is, is right about this is a key you know, piece of, of, of survivability and lethality equipment. Absolutely. Thank you very much.